29 בנובמבר 1947. Gary Lucas blends Jewish music with Chinese pop and blues slide guitar, prayers with Marx Brothers references. No wonder his early inspiration was rock and roll. The first guitarist that I heard was Dwayne Eddy, who had a song Dance with the Guitar Man. And it was just a really simple kind of moronic ditty, but it had a break on the guitar that I just thought was amazing. And I was like, I want to learn how to play this on the guitar. And, then, you know, I didn't really get involved with this until my father, God bless him, came to me out of the blue one day when I was nine years old and said, Gary, I think you should be learning a musical instrument. What about playing the guitar? I was useless, you know, I didn't really, I wasn't disciplined enough to make a, a real serious study of it. Also, this guitar was so difficult to play. <laughs> I had bloody fingers from attempting this. But eventually, I persevered towards bluesy, soulful kind of music. I mean, and this is what I hear in Jewish music, I have to say. When I hear a cantor wailing in a synagogue, this touches me really as deeply as if I hear a black blues from the Mississippi Delta. In the same instance, there's a kind of a human expressing either anguish or joy. There's you know? a musicological explanation to some of this, at least, the pentatonic scales. Yes, and well, I think if you do a study, uh, you'll see that a lot of the same scales that are used in klezmer music, which is really kind of Balkan gypsy music too, it shares a, a lineage, Celtic music, Indian music, African music, and Jew Jewish music. There's a connection. Having earned a degree in English at Yale University and having worked as a DJ for a spell, Gary Lucas then found a project that appealed to his intercultural tastes. In 1973, I saw a call for musicians and singers and dancers to take part in what turned out to be the European premiere of Leonard Bernstein's Mass. So again, I'm like, wait a second, Lenny was a very public Jew, and so what is he doing a Catholic Mass for? This is something I have to check out. Well, it turns out, you know, he was a very ecumenical person who was also into building bridges to other cultures and religions. And so, you know, if he wanted to take on this challenge, I think, you know, oh, why not? Let's hear what he has to say. You know, I was a Lenny fan. I love West Side Story. He had a real soul, and I mean, he was a mensch. So I said, he I got... conduct like that, and oh, somebody with a lot of soul. Soul, and you know, he was just amazing, a force of nature. So I said, I want to be part of this. And he invited me to play the lead guitar because there was an electric guitar part, part in this score. And in fact, the first notes of the piece are played by the electric guitar. I strike a chord, it's a <laughs> resonant chord. So, you know, we went to Vienna and that was my first time in Europe. And then I met Bernstein, too, and he shook my hand, and he said, I loved what you were playing on guitar. You were really wailing. This was like the best praise <laughs> I ever heard for my playing, you know, at this point. I've worked with three great Bs, you know, Beefheart, Bernstein, and Jeff Buckley. But anyway, he was my first hero in music. I, and you mentioned that he was about building bridges. You made yourself a bridgey kind of album, The Edge of Heaven. Oh, yeah. Of old Chinese Chinese pop tunes. music, yeah. right. Was that a conscious attempt at, at bridges? Well, yes, you could say it was. I mean, only in so far as this. I've traveled all over the world and I wound up for a couple of years in clubs in Hong Kong, Bangkok. I was on television in Taiwan and worked with singers and had a band with Chinese kids. But in that band, there was a Jewish kid from Shaker Heights, Cleveland, who played blues harmonica. There were two Chinese guys from Taiwan who were the rhythm section. <laughs> there was a Swedish rhythm guitar player, you know. So my whole philosophy was a big tent philosophy, like try and involve as many different kind of people. The only thing that united us was a love of music. In recent years, Lucas' work often took on distinct Jewish themes. He wrote music for the 1920s silent movie The Golem, then recorded a couple of albums in which he blended Jewish themes and blues playing. Are you a religious person, if I may ask? In my own way, privately, I would say yes. I'm a believer, number one, and I feel spiritually connected to the tradition, you know, but I was raised a secular, reformed Jewish person, 
I know to the Orthodox, they wouldn't consider me very Jewish because of this, and yet, see, I think it transcends mere ritual. Uh, for me, it wasn't as important as just knowing that I had a core identity as a Jewish person, recognizing that, and trying to make my way in the world as best I could. There are many Jews who are very closeted about their identity to this day. You know, they don't think it's politic for their career maybe to be so associated with this. But when I was in Austria on a, interviewed on a program once about my Chinese album, mm -hmm. they said, so what are you doing here with this Chinese music? <laughs> Traveling around, I said, I'm a Jewish cowboy. And, you know, it's like, I what else would I be doing? What else am I doing? I'm just, you know, going around trying to, you know, my investigation showed that many of the players on these records are Jewish klezmer musicians really? who emigrated to Shanghai. Really? Because when the fascism and Nazism came into Europe, one of the places Jews emigrated to was Shanghai, Shanghai. because it was a free port. And a lot of the musicians found work in the studios recording studios and nightclubs, playing the strange hybrid <laughs> of Jewish, Chinese, you know, jazz show. It's so beautiful anyway. Um, and I like this kind of fusion of cultures, you know. I don't think it takes away at all from the, the purity of whatever music. I mean, I can say that... Uh, Is there purity in music? See, I don't think so, because it's impossible to live in this world without hearing and experiencing. You could be a hermit, but you're still going to, like, somehow there are things in the air that are going to go in to influence you. I've given a lot of thought to this, because there was a famous anti-Semitic, terrible uh, piece by Wagner called On Judaism and Music, which is, like, an amazingly hateful document, and yet, some of the points he makes about, he thought that the problem with a lot of Jewish music was that there were too many influences, you know? And that it was a kind of mongrelized music. And I thought, that's great! That's what I like about Jewish music. In that it's like a big tent. It's like it embraced, you know, I mean, look at... Neftule Brandwein in New York playing Turkeska. There you which go. is Turkish music. That's right. And there's so many examples of these hybrids, you know, and yet, you know, the Jewish spirit still shines through. This is something they couldn't break down. So what is it? What is so it the essence of Judaism? What is it the, the, well, the very core? Okay. I don't know, but I think a sense of irony is crucial and a sense of humor. And I think, you know, you could say it's black humor, gallows humor, but it's like a worldly humor that acknowledges foibles of people and human failings, and yet looks in a positive way. This is my father used to say, when you're handed a lemon, you should make lemonade. <laughs> Somebody gives you a lemon. It's the same thing. This is a gift, I really think, you know, that's like essential to Jews. And when they lose the sense of humor, then it turns into just a very cranky, fundamentalist, and not very humanistic output, and this should be avoided at all costs. Bye.